What's up smart homers? My name's Aaron. In this video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi in 2021. Press start. Home Assistant has come a long way in the past few years and even in the past few months. It's now easier than ever to get it up and running. Hopefully this video helps some of you who haven't tried Home Assistant yet and who are a little hesitant to feel a little more comfortable with giving it a shot. At the end of this video, I'll also show you how you can get Z-Wave and Zigbee integrations up and running on the Raspberry Pi as well. I should start by saying that I'm no veteran Home Assistant user. I've only been using it for about six months and while there is a steep learning curve, you don't need to be a software engineer or a programmer to be able to use it. So first, let's talk hardware. For this project, you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi, of course. I use the Raspberry Pi 4. You're gonna need a USB-C power cable with adapter. You're going to need a ethernet cable. You're gonna need an SD card and an SD card reader. You'll also need some sort of case, or at least I'd recommend one, especially one that has cooling capabilities. The easiest way to get all these together is to buy a kit of some kind, like the Canna Kit Raspberry Pi 4 starter kit. Some versions of the Canna Kit kits come with fans and heat sinks that can be mounted onto the Raspberry Pi to help cool it. However, the kit that I bought comes with an aluminum case that acts as a heat sink for the CPU, passively cooling it. The Raspberry Pi is going to run Home Assistant off of the SD card. In order to get the Home Assistant image onto the SD card, you're going to need a special flashing software called Bellina Etcher that will flash the image onto the SD card. Then when the Raspberry Pi starts up, it will boot up Home Assistant. First, put the SD card into the SD card reader and plug that into your PC. I'm doing this on a PC and the instructions on a Mac may be a little different. Next, go to Google and search for Bellina Etcher and click the link for bellinaetcher.io. Once there, download the Bellina Etcher software. While that's downloading, go back to Google and search for Home Assistant Raspberry Pi on Google. Click the link to this Home Assistant IO page that gives you instructions on how to install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi. If you don't feel like watching this video, you can stop here and just follow this guide on homeassistant.io. Scroll down the page to where it gives the URL for the Home Assistant installation file and then copy the URL for the 64-bit version of Home Assistant for whichever Raspberry Pi model you're using. Once Bellina Etcher is downloaded, open it and click Flash from URL. Paste the URL that you just copied from Home Assistant IO into the box and click OK. Bellina Etcher will download that Home Assistant image and then will ask you to select the target location that it should be flashed to. Click Select Target and then choose the SD card that you connected to your computer earlier. Click flash and wait. Once the flashing is complete, you're gonna get a confirmation screen that looks like this. And now you can remove the SD card from your PC. If you haven't done so already, it's time to assemble your Raspberry Pi. The kit that I bought and I'd recommend comes with a thermal pad that you can place on your CPU. This helps transfer heat from the CPU to the aluminum case that's going to do the cooling. The case can then be put on the Pi and then secured with four screws. There are no fans or heat sinks with this one which makes it super easy to set up. Insert the flashed SD card into the Raspberry Pi, the ports on the bottom, and attach an Ethernet cable to the Ethernet port and then finally plug in the USB-C power cable. Your Raspberry Pi is going to power up. On your PC browser, navigate to homeassistant.local colon 8123. Alternatively, you can log in with the IP address of your Raspberry Pi colon 8123. If you don't know the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, you can log into your router and find it there. Once you navigate to your IP address or to homeassistant.local, you're going to see a screen indicating that Home Assistant is starting up for the first time. Wait until it's complete and then create a username and password following the prompts. Once you log in, it's going to ask you for some other basic information, which you can go ahead and fill in and then click next. 
You can choose to share information with Home Assistant if you want. And once you're done, click Next. Okay, next it's gonna show you a bunch of different devices and services that it found on your network. Automatically discovering them so that you can integrate them easily. I'm gonna go ahead and skip these, but you could click on them and integrate them individually. The area that's displayed when you first log in is called a Loveless dashboard. I'm not gonna get into how to set one of these up to look really good, but you've seen in my previous videos what mine looks like. This takes a bit of time to get it looking just the way you want, and that's not something I'm gonna cover in this video, but I will cover how to add Zigbee and Z-Wave integrations. Once that's complete, you're done. You now have Home Assistant running on a Raspberry Pi. Super easy. One of the main reasons for using Home Assistant is the ability to control Z-Wave and Zigbee devices. With the 2021.9 release of Home Assistant, integrating Z-Wave and Zigbee is easier than ever. Since Home Assistant can now recognize USB devices when they're plugged in, it makes the entire process much simpler. To set up Zigbee communication, you're gonna need a Zigbee dongle. In this video, I'm using the Dresden Electronic Conbi 2. All you need to do is plug the USB stick into your Raspberry Pi USB port, and then you're gonna to go to Configuration, Integrations, and then on the Integrations page, you should see that the USB stick is recognized as a device for ZHA, Zigbee Home Automation. All you need to do is click Configure, and then it's going to ask you to confirm that you wanna use this device as the Zigbee coordinator. After confirming, you're now set up with Zigbee communication. It's that simple. Setting up Z-Wave communication is very similar. <clears throat> like with Zigbee, you're gonna need a Z-Wave USB dongle. I'm using the Zoos S2 stick in this video. Once again, plug the USB stick into the Raspberry Pi USB port and navigate to the integrations page. The Z-Wave stick should be detected as a device for Z-Wave JS. Configure the device and now you can begin adding Z-Wave devices. Just a side note, if you wanna do both Zigbee and Z-Wave, I'd recommend that you get the Nortec USB stick, which has both Z-Wave and Zigbee radios. This will take up only one USB port on your Raspberry Pi and plugging it in, it should be recognized by both ZHA and Z-Wave JS. Anyway, I think we'll stop there for now. If you guys wanna see a part two where I go over some basic add-ons I think you should use, as well as show you how to add Z-Wave and Zigbee devices, please let me know in the comments and give this video a like. Let me know in the comments if there's any other basics type videos that you'd like to see. Also, I'll be doing more guides like this as well as automation idea videos and product reviews. So if you wanna see those, please consider subscribing and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you.